to document your account of what happened in March of 1997. All right. Uh, particularly what happened at the school. So tell me uh, basically what happened that day. All right. That day uh, I was outside that morning because because Miss Hatch hadn't been teaching me that entire year, and and I was out in very basically in the corridor between the the primary branch of that school and then the structure that's still left standing currently in 2012. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting uh, Indian style, I think. I'm pretty sure I was. At the How old were you at the time? I was 10. Okay. I was 10 and about three fourths. And uh, what happened is I was basically being verbally assaulted by Miss Hatch and by school officials and school duties and stuff. They were they were complaining to me because they were accusing me of teaching my uh, the fourth graders that were in the, when I was in fifth grade in a, a geometry class about how to do their mathematics for mm -hmm. basic geometry like primary like really basic stuff about angles and, and everything and I was I was basically accusing them of it's like well why is that your business anyway because I'm just helping my friends and I can't help it if they get, give the paper to the fourth graders and I was just explaining what the steps were to arrive to the conclusion I didn't do their homework okay so so I don't see what the problem was and they were still being very harassive and, and combative and they started confiscating my school supplies and tearing them to shreds because I was still talking to them that would be the school hall how were they tearing them to shreds I mean they, just... well, they, they got my t notebook and they would just like go like this and, and I, I brought my so they were pages. tearing pages out of your notebook and tearing the pages apart or yeah okay hold on can you stop that yeah is that ready yeah so you were being assaulted by yeah I was being assaulted uh, verbally and physically even by uh, a group of kids and their teachers and then I had I had school administrators looking on laughing and thinking that they had had me or something mm -hmm. and I was following the law to the utmost of my ability. I was still sitting Indian style. I was looking away from them to be non-combative. I was doing everything right. I had a white shirt on. And I was doing everything I could to avoid a hostile encounter. When, when did the police show up? He showed up within about five minutes. And what he did was I, I knew he was probably not very happy with me before because of all the information that I gave you in the preliminary. What kind of uniform was he wearing? A normal, normal one. I mean, what color was it? Navy, brown, I mean, white. I think it was navy. Navy. You know, is that you know, all the police officers? Because I'm trying to figure out which department may. Yeah, he was like a dark navy, I think. Okay. I'm not gonna answer that. It's probably her again. All right. All right. So, dark navy, possibly. Uh, we don't know which department. If it's the. No, he refused to identify later, but he, he actually. Did you refused. ask him to identify himself? Several times, and he refused to give. He you absolutely name. refused to identify. Nor you have any idea which. I knew all the law. I'd studied this. For well, we're trying weeks. to figure out which department because we got. Right. We got Salt Lake he, City. He did tell me his rank finally once I had gotten past Pro Legati. Okay. And I was. I'm pretty damn sure I was higher than Pro Legati, actually. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. I'm looking at your. Um, Preliminary testimony that uh -huh. you submitted. It's a 14 page document, right? And I'm kind of going over Actually, I was on the airplane yesterday and read it in detail and have highlighted several areas that I thought were interesting Okay um, Shoot. Trying to get to the more relevant uh, issues uh, Did you con try to contact the FBI? I did contact try to contact the FBI several times through, through, through the school office Okay any luck there? I didn't get any real response, no. Okay. And I tried to, to get his name beforehand, several weeks before, a few times, and he refused to provide it then, because I wanted to, to make a complaint to the police department then, because he was actually letting felonies be committed by school administrators. Okay. Um, to kind of move on, because we got to get... I just kind of want to hit certain highlight areas and move on. Uh, there was a game that you talked about called Delta Force. Oh, right. Um, that was... Uh, 
I played, it was like uh, the very first one of them. Mm -hmm. I think it was Delta Force 2, actually, but it might have been the regular, the regular one. And uh, I played that because I had already had training from a, a police detective at the U on how, to, on how to handle firearms because I knew from the code of conduct that if there was a situation, I would actually be required to at least know how to basically use a firearm. Mm -hmm. And so I just did that uh, for practice because I was very stressed at the time and I was also going around and knowing the terrain of the school in the event that there could be an escalating situation. So I was just being prepared within three weeks and reviewing all the law that was anywhere relevant to something like this. Okay. Um, what, what are you referring to as a code of conduct? Is it a school? Oh, no, code that, is, that is a technical legal document uh, issued by the United States. Um, the one I, the version I read was issued out in 1996. And I think it's like uh, 200 pages or something. And it involves how to... It involves the proper chain of command, when, when in a school especially, for uh, students whose lives are being threatened by an official, or an officer, or something. And it involves the, the proper way and the proper terms to use to get them to comply, and if they do not comply, you have other legal options, but if your life is in danger and so is theirs, you have other situations where you can go through and elevate and redesignate. Have you tried to contact federal education officials? Uh, I did not have their number. I asked to, to contact the the school, what was it called? Um, the school department head. And mm -hmm. I asked a few times through, through the office and they said they wouldn't give you the time of day. And I'm like, but this is very serious. This officer is actually letting you guys commit felonies right and left. Okay. And he's not identifying, he's not doing anything. And you tried to... And I contacted through teachers, and they, they wouldn't have do much. Him and would let me go in and review the law that I'd already read in fourth grade. And you tried to read to the officer the code of conduct, and he laughed No, at I didn't. I actually memorized all of the Utah code for uh, the Constitution for the sections. I knew which ones he might be in violation of, so I remembered the numbers. I told him the section numbers that he was in violation of, and I told him... I even offered him ambassadorial immunity when I had reached the point where there was no recourse anyway. I said, there's going to be no charge as long as we assume command. I will, and I will, I will like surrender my person or like release myself or whatever into your custody as long as we can get these children out of here because I know that they were in danger and they were seen injustice committed by the school administration. Was the Utah State Police by any way involved? Probably because I became Utah State Police. Okay, how, how did that happen? Uh, what happens is once you re elevate to the highest federal education official mm -hmm. and they choose to try to kill you, you can basically say, okay, well, I can't be an official anymore, so I'm going to drop my rank and I'm going to actually actively engage as a Utah police officer, Utah State Police. Okay. Can you, can you elaborate that a little bit further? Uh you go through three tiers of, of education official from uh, you go first you start off obviously as a civilian you work up to no recourse you go to pro bono you go through the three tiers define pro bono pro bono is a, a legal term used for attorneys that goodwill attorneys it means uh, if there is a situation where there there couldn't really be a real representation you go in and you, you represent the party. In this case, it was about 30 fourth graders. Mm -hmm. and I, So they became my charges at that point, and I just wanted to get them out of there. So like, I figured even if they got me arrested, at least I would have some witnesses to go home. So I was just trying to get them out of there, and they would refuse to comply. Okay. And um, who are you talking about, the former U.S. facility com uh, commander? Oh, oh, that is the term that you use for the office for when it's an education facility. You say, I shall require an escort to this facility's command center. Uh -huh. And that's referring to getting him, the officer, to escort me personally into that facility because we are required to assume command and get everyone out. Okay, and you said, um, well... You said correction. I was an attorney with charges. Oh yeah, legal those, charges. Those fourth graders 
Now I am Utah State Police. Yeah, that was talking about how I was frustrated to the point of no return because that school was basically through, through pending an internal investigation. That school was going to be at least suspended or probably indefinitely revoked. Okay. And you also said that the nurses held back or held blades. Oh, they held something that was sharp to and your, pointy. Okay. No, they didn't hold it to my person. They tried to, and I had a pistol in my hand. Okay. I had the pistol from the first responder who changed his mind and helped me. What kind of pistol was it? Uh, it was the one that, that the police carry on their legs. He so had was his a backup main pistol. Firearm. Was it automatic yeah, it was or semi-automatic? Was it like a revolver or? It was a revolver, I think. Okay. I'm pretty sure. You know what? Uh, it was silver. Okay. You know what uh, size ammunition? Uh, maybe it was this. I don't know. Nine mil, thirty-eight. 38. No, okay. I, I didn't have time. I was extremely stressed. Okay. All right. Now, how did the military get involved? They got involved because what happened is the police wouldn't follow, like, let me assume command. Mm -hmm. And so since the authorities refused to back down, I started spouting off military terms so that he could hear it over the radio so that they could intercept or whatever. Maybe not intercept, but get through. And so there would be dialogue. And they would refuse to comply at multiple levels, and they refused to let me assume command of that uh, command center. Okay. So what happened is they actually came uh, when I was almost about to die, and uh, they saved my life. Okay. How, were you injured or shot or what? I was shot at. Okay. But you weren't actually injured, or well, my ear was injured from all the air, from all the gunshots. Okay, so it was a noise damage to yes. your ear. Yes. Okay. And who got on the radio and said, "Where the fuck is our tactical?" Unit? Oh, I, I, I shouted that into the radio while the the officer who was with me was talking on the radio. Okay. And who were the two MPs or the military police? We became the MPs because we were the police. Okay. So now you went from being a civilian police to military police. Yes, that is the okay. that is the chain. All right. But but well, we we're, we were fair, we, we, I became a plain clothes officer. Uh -huh. And I, and I be said like we're basically like undercover eventually because I was trying everything I could to get them to stop, and they wouldn't let us assume command. No one would, and they were being extremely hostile and aggressive. Okay, and were you a, a federal? I was a federal or official. national guard because you got federal and there's not you said something about I was, what happened is I became uh, what happens is once you when you're an MP I wasn't didn't think there was actually any kind of age for the MP because there was no recourse mm -hmm. so so what I did was um, I said okay well if we have to elevate to this point then the state is basically in limbo if the state's in limbo then I can revert to a colonial form of, of law. 